Hello beautiful people, nice to meet you again. So today I'm going to talk you very fast through this very old technique, how to randomize your objects. This is very relevant when you have something very repetitive pattern in terms of geometry. So we have these blocks or geometry or anything. And so now imagine you want to randomize it with some texture, right? So we have the same texture for each box. And here we, with only the material, we could do it something like that. And of course, um, I just want to remind you and myself how to do that because this is not a unique technique, but and this is relevant to basically any render engine. You could do it with Redshift, you could do it with uh, Cinema 4D when you apply your cloner and apply some randomizer factor but back to Houdini so let's see what we got so I have pretty much the geometry itself I have a camera just to look through the camera and to have something to look at uh, material, different materials, some simulation, some interest, camera position and whatsoever. Three different lights, dome light to fill up the gaps, two lights to create this cross section, right? This is like a point of interest in our scene because we want to guide your eyes on the center. Okay, and then the render engine. Uh, sorry, render settings karma. I'm going to do it with Karma XPU and the main idea behind that is that you want to assign some different random numbers for each piece from 0 to 1 in our example because that is simpler so for example this one will be 1 .0 .1, 0 0.1, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 or whatsoever and uh, the easiest way to do that is go back to your object okay where you create your object this is a pretty simple one with uv materials one block copy that in one direction copy that in another direction and what essentially what you could do is assign a connectivity node uh, which will give you the integer for every right for every piece and for every related points to one piece that will give uh, the same number so from 0 in this case to 399 and uh, then this is just like post randomization based on this integer number and I will create a custom attribute which is class random from class uh, this is a random function will give you a random number from 0 to 1 this is exactly what we need and if you want to visualize that you could use your color node RAM from attribute, use your shift from 0 to 1. So now we have this pattern when every piece has different uh, assignment in terms of shift. So one piece will go with this number and everything from 0 to 1. This is, uh, that's it for the preparation. Going back to our camera and how would you use that? So create your material. I'm going with Karma, but you could do that the same with Arnold or Redshift again. Uh, this is relevant for every other scene. In Karma, for this point of this floor, I have basic setup, color, a rough map, and normal using a normal map. In this case, don't forget to use Vector3 because this is normal map and this is Vector3. And in order to use that here, you need to import this uh, guy inside your shader network. Uh, primvar, in this case, USD Primvar will allow you to read any custom attribute you have created before. So take this one, assign that to the base color, go to XPU and yeah of course you need to assign this material uh, so we're back we assign our material and now you could see that if i did it f this is nothing and if i do this custom attribute uh, shift go back we have 
random attribute for every piece of the geometry. So how could we use that? And let's start with the color. We want to randomize our color, right? And we want to do it based on some different number for each piece, because for now it's pretty repetitive. Uh, and in this case, I guess we need to do a few steps. First is a texture coordinate, mm, because we should have this different direction. And second is 2D, I guess, place to be this one. So let me connect this to the texture and connect this one to the texture coordinate in the color material itself. Texture coordinate and texture coordinate as well. And this will allow me to rotate our texture 90 degrees. So we have this beautiful lines up and down. Starting with the color, let's use color correction. Adjustment. Uh, this color, uh, this node should be available in every render engine, I guess, as much as Redshift, as much as I know, and in Octane, and so on. You want to color correct your image, and you want to color correct it based on some shift in the colors, in this float numbers random. To do that, let's use range node adjustment and this node will expect insight and we go from 0 to 1 which we already have and let's go to out put some pretty strong number from 0 0.5 for example to 2 and this number will determine how much we change our saturation gamma lift grain contra contrast based on the on this piece. For example, let's start with the hue. So in this case you could see that we change our hue which is, uh, you could disconnect that and just quickly change that, see that this is from 0 to 1, this is like a color wheel, but in this case we're presenting 0 to 1. And you could change that very subtle, for example, connect that to hue and change that from 0 to 0.1. So this way we have some variation in the color. Again, very subtle, maybe something like that, maybe even not noticeable, but you will notice that at the end. And so basically again, the logic behind here is like you have your random number for each piece from 0 to 1, plug that into the range, change range or fit range or whatsoever from 0 to 1 and you change that range from different set of numbers, right? From 0 to 0 1 or from 10 to 100 and this is up to you and then you plug that into the correction node or possibly you could plug that into the offset or, or scale so let's do a few more just to visualize the possibility. Uh, create another one range, go to saturation. Saturation is going from one. So in this case, we could use from 0 0.8 to be a little bit desaturated and 0 and 1.1. So you have some colors going away, right? Again, probably you should label your node in this And let me see, yeah, that is cool. Gamma is from 0 0.1. Let's do extreme example and 1. And yeah, already we have something, right? We have very nice representative of differentiation, the color and texture, and that is cool. So what else could be done here? Uh, specifically for Karma, you have this random float. So you could change your pattern, or I would say a seed for the randomization inside a shader, which is cool because uh, before that you have the same shift for the same piece, right? But now you have different saturation for this and different, uh, for example, gamma for that. 
And the same could be done for everything. I would go for another one just to have something. Uh, contrast could be used as well. So and then this one, I want only the one and plug it into the contrast, right? I'm not going to do, to do this very strong in this case, but again, uh, minimal, and you have this beautiful seat again, so you could randomize that as well. Oh, for only for the color, and we have that much of a difference before and after. So this is before, and this we have already. So this is a huge step inside. Uh, so another thing you could do is changing the um, projection itself because now it's very repetitive and super repeated every time. So I will skip this guy because this will interact our view. For now we just want to see this tiled texture. Let's copy this guy. Let's copy this guy as well and see what you could do. Okay, so what could be done here is plug in your variation inside the offset and you need to be aware that this could be done in any case, in any slot and of course we have from 0 to 1 minimum and maximum and let's do another range adjustment because already we have something but Maybe you want to accelerate this effect and just have very different projection, right? And this is radical and we break the pattern already so we could do it further. Let's see that we could, for example, change air rotation every piece case it's like 2d placement but I could do that for example for the rotation and I know that the value was 90 so let's do something from 85 to 95 or so so we have this very light um, displacement that is not working pretty well but at least you know that you could do that a little bit of recreation will help, right? I like that. Uh, maybe from 0 to closer to 1, so pretty much is the default number. But you could see that basically only with the uh, placement differentiation it, was, it already looks way better. And if we place in the color correction node, that is cool. And now it's probably invisible that you have only one texture for one piece. So this is very oldie and cool technique. And I hope that is useful for you. Just a reminder that you could use that in any scenario, not just for the wood piece, but for example, for grass, for different trees or whatsoever. Every time you have the repetitive pattern of geometry you could use this with only one material network so take care and again we'll see you back when the world come into reality and i think i will be back with i will be back like a terminator right <laughs> okay take care and bye bye